What is up, Hedgehog Maniacs? Sonic 17 here. I am back with more Doki Doki Fallen Angel. Mod for Doki Doki Loser Club. The last time you guys saw me play this, had a had another day out with Yuri and everything. At the beginning, it was saying that it was only Maka and Sayuri. The only thing I don't understand in this whole entire ordeal... What the hell happened to Natsuki? I just hope she's okay. Because I'd like to go get some answers on that one. Let's hope my answers. Let's hope my questions get answered here. Because without further ado, it's time to dive in. And let's do it to it! I awakened in my own bed today. You and I did re read together last night, so she's still at her house. In fact, we haven't talked. I haven't talked much this past week after I told her I'm taking her to the to a doctor. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yuri seems a little nervous about this. Yuri sees herself as some sort of freak, and I'm sure taking her to a psychiatrist probably doesn't help her help that image. Nevertheless, this is important. I text Yuri to remind her that after school we're meeting the psychiatrist. I look outside my window. It's a bit foggy, but that's not going to stop me. I do my boy boy routine of showering, brushing my teeth, and getting dressed. What to eat, what to eat. I repeatedly open and close different cabinets, lowering my standards with each one. Cereal it is. I grab a bowl and pour myself some cereal. I then open the fridge. No, 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 no! I'm out of milk. This has got to be the worst day of my life. Ugh. Maybe I can find a substitute. I look through the shelves of my fridge. I pour out a jug of orange juice. I glance at the bowl of dry cereal. Then at the orange juice. Then back in the bowl. Is he gonna do it? Lord, forgive me for what I'm about to, for what I'm about to sin. He actually did, but doesn't show it. <laughs> Last class of the day, it's almost over. I still blink at the clock, watching the seconds tick away. The teacher says something or, or other... Uh, uh, uh. The teacher says something or other about World War II. I don't need to know history. I have my future all figured out. I'm going to write a song and become a famous musician. I already have the first line down. Cuzzy gang. Hmm. I guess I just repeat that line a dozen more times and call it music. <laughs> I'm not sure if that counts. Whoa! I wasn't expecting that. Bell rings. It appears the school day is over. I told Yuri that I would meet her in front of the school. I take a shortcut through the courtyard so I can meet up with Yuri. My mind is going a mile right, a, a minute right now. I have no idea what will happen when I bring Yuri to this doctor. Wait. Sanyex. I saw the sound of the name calling from an, an all too familiar voice. I turn to see who the person is. Who is it? Oh no. Wait, who's- why is he saying, oh no? Is it Monica or is it Sayuri? Monica! <sighs> How do 
Stop you causing the trouble in this mod! want to walk home together when we haven't spoken in a month. And it's not like we left on a good terms either. I'm actually about to go somewhere. You said you were heading home. You were the lie to me. What you say next? No, it's just that. I look, I look around for the escape route. In the distance I see a... In the distance I see a tall purple figure near the gates of the school. I look back at Monica. Her eyes follow mine, and she also spots the public figure. I see. Monica, I didn't mean to lie to you. I'm sure you did, Sonix. I'm going to let you walk home. Bye. Monica tries hard. It's that, je it's that jealousy of hers. She isn't self-aware. But she is jealous. I still don't like the fact that she did that pose again. Without another thought, I make my break, make a break towards the gate. Hello. That's a nice background. I'm here. There you are. I was getting worried. Sorry, sorry if I made you wait. I got caught up trying to take a shortcut. I guess it turned out into a long cut, huh? I let a awkward laugh, but Yui still retains her nervous expression. Perhaps long cut wasn't a very good word choice. You think? I take her hand and hold it softly in mine. Yuri, look at me. It's gonna be okay. I promise. Yuri, Yuri slowly nods. Hello! This is interesting. Alright, here it is. I, I took... I, I look at the clock above the doorway. Right on time, too. The doctor should be out any second. As soon as I finish my sentence, a man walks out of the office door. He's an older gentleman with black hair that started... that has started to gray. He wears an outfit you see in one of those fancy, expensive magazines. Nice dress shoes, a pristine three-piece suit and tie, and even a gold watch. Langton? Wait! <laughs> Dr. Peter Langton, psychiatrist! <laughs> SpongeBob reference here! <laughs> nice one, man! Nice one! <laughs> Pleasure to meet you. He shakes my hand. You must be Son Yurex, correct? Yes, sir. And this, is, and this is Yuri. He holds out his hand to Yuri. Well, this is awkward. After a few seconds, Dr. Langton lowers his hand. Ah, that's fine. It's okay to be nervous around the doctor. I know. But I want you to know that there is nothing to fear. This is a safe place. He raises his arm as if to display his office. So how about we step through the door and begin the session? Alright, let's go. Oh, I'm sorry sir, but for now I only wish to speak to the young lady here. What? Really? 
just for now. Perhaps in later sessions you could join in, but for the first time it's better to be one on one. I decided not to argue. Okay, I'll wait here. Thank you, thank you for your understanding. He turns to Yuri, who hasn't spoken a word since we arrived. Shall we step inside? <laughs> Doc, you mind if I talk to her in private for a second? Not at all. Not at all. Take your time. I'll be in the office for whenever you're ready. He steps back into his office and closes the door. What are you thinking right now? I can't do this. Don't say that. I put my hands on her shoulders. Listen to me. You're a strong girl. You can get through this. And I'll be right here waiting the entire time. Dr. Lankin only wants to help you. But I need you to cooperate. If not for him, or for you, then for me. Yui stares blankly at me. Okay. I'll do my best. That's all I ask. I give her a hug and she steps inside and steps into the office. I guess I'll just sit here then. I take a seat and look around. The waiting room is full of motivational posters, pictures, and other stupid stuff. I look at the wall. I, I look at the wall next to me. The certificate goes out to Peter Langton. Blah blah blah. Stanford University. Blah blah blah. Seems this guy really knows his stuff. This is perfect. For the first time in a month, I think I can finally re relax. You may be able to, but to me, I can't. Not in this mod. I still like to know what's going on with Natsuki. Finally getting Yuri the help she needs. Z huh? What the? Wait a minute. The last time I got something like that in this mod, something the mod played out. Is it gonna be the same thing again? I pull out my phone to see what I re to see. I pull out my phone to see. I see a re see. I re received a text from an unnamed number. Uh oh. Oh, it's the same. Th it's the same thing again. You can't protect her forever. What the hell? This is the same person from a few weeks ago. What could they possibly want? Don't worry, once she's gone, we won't have to worry about her. It's not like anyone would care. This has gone too far. I fiercely type back a response. Listen, I don't know who you are, but if you don't stop texting this number, you will have some serious problems. You shouldn't threaten someone when you know you can't back up anything you say, Sadiex. Person knows my name? This is. That's got. It's got me, Marika! My hands are shaking intensely. Who is this? You will know. Soon enough. I shut off my phone to prevent any more messages. Who is this person? The only person. The only person I can think of has my number is Sayo. Dr. Langton and Yui walk out of the office. Pushing aside my thoughts, I stand up to talk to him. Give it to me straight, Doc! Your friend's in good health. I look at him quizzically. Really? Yes, she has a common case of societal social anxiety. It's really common, nothing to get work too worked over. Perhaps we can schedule another meeting so I can learn more. So what do we do? There are cases. There are cases with, where, with age, the, the anxiety eventually fades away. There are also therapies and medical professionals such as myself that are willing to help. Simple as that. Simple as simple as that. He gives me a reassuring smile. Thanks, Doc. And what about? Her. 
you know, know what? I look over at Yuri, who was standing awkwardly at the door. She didn't tell. She didn't tell him about her cutting. Doc, what exactly did you talk about? I'm sorry, but that's private information that I'm not allowed to disclose. Patient confidentially. There was an annoyed. There was an annoyed pitch to my voice when I recite that term to him. Of course, if she chooses to confide that, that information to you, that's that's her choice. Thanks, Doc. My pleasure. I give him one last handshake and escort Yuri out the building. The rest of the walk home is quiet. Neither of us choose to talk to each other. I can't believe I did all this effort to help Yuri, and she does this. She can't even tell someone what's wrong with her. I need to calm down. It's not her fault. I should, I should be, should have been aware this would happen. I should have forced her to see a psychiatrist. We walk into the house and take, and Yuri takes a seat on the couch. I stand awkwardly before taking a seat next to her. I have to apologize. Yuri, I... I'm sorry. She buries her face in her hands and begins to cry. I disappointed you. Just like I do with everyone else. I place my arm ar around her. No, Yuri. I failed you. I, I should have known better than to force you into something like that. She lifts her hand and stares at me. Her lavender eyes are a puppy with tears. No, you were right to help me. I want to go back. Can you schedule another appointment? I'm taking it back. Really? I know this is what's best for me. And if you're by my side, I think I can get through it. I'll always be by your side, Yuri. I take her hand and into, 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 into wine with it, with, with mine. Can you do me a favor, Sonyx? Of course. I don't know how to go about explaining everything to the doctor. Well, I'm all ears if you need me. Thank you. Yuri takes a moment to collect her thoughts, an action I see her do quite often. Do you know why I do it? I would guess in order to feel some sort of control over your emotions. You're not too far off. <sighs> Sonyx, for all my life, I've allowed people to be, to be the glue, the stitches, and the bandages that hold me together. And every time that we open, and every time that we open around fail. I was only a small girl when I first witnessed how unforgiving this world can be. My mother and father were arguing non-stop. I was scared that one day, they may even hurt each other. Whoa. That's a shock right there. I use sparks as a coping mechanism. I would hope that I could draw, I could, I could draw out, draw out my own reality and enter a new one. Eventually, my dad left my mother and I, uh, my mother, sorry, sorry. Eventually, my dad left my mother and I, and my mom had to pick up an extra job to support us. Even with all that happening, I just continued to repress my feelings and read my books. That's how I lived my life until. She pauses again to catch her breath and collect her thoughts. High school has been the worst years of my life. Everyone is so cruel and selfish. She stares deeply into my eyes. Or, that's why I thought until I met you. But even so, the kids at school would always call me foul names 
over me or spread rules about me. Boys will always pick on me or stare at me when I walk by or call me obscene, obscene names. She, she starts, she's starting to panic. I can see the fear in her eyes grow with each sentence. Yuri, I think we need to stop here for now. No! I need to get this out. Please! Tears continue to glide down her cheeks. I slowly nod and allow her to continue. I didn't know any other way to get rid of the pain inside. There's no such thing as a cure for pain. I had to find a way to release it somehow. I try to understand what she's saying. So I was right? It's a cope it's a coping mechanism? It was at first. At first? At first when I was really scared. But the, at that moment I first did it, the feeling of the blade splitting into my skin? The cold steel gliding along my arm? The beauty of the Christmas streams flowing down my arms? It was exhilarating! What? It no, it no longer became a way to deal with the pain. I had been seduced by it. It almost felt good to cut. I knew it was bad, but I couldn't stop myself. My mind was already lost. I wasn't strong enough to stop the urges. I get a feeling in my body I didn't understand, screaming at me to let go of everything I'm feeling. Do it, it feels like I'm in my own world. It's the same thing as when I'm reading a book. Except the words are written in red. And the blade is my pen. But the book eventually ends. My arm could heal. And I could continue to relieve that moment of true freedom and continuously. This is worse than I thought. I always thought it was just a way for her to cope with life. But now I see it's more of some type of drug! She's forming an addiction to it! Yuri! This is a lot to take in, but... I just want to say... I don't blame you! What? None of what happened is your fault! I wrap her hand in mine. We can't control what happens in our lives, and sometimes we can't control how we feel! Sometimes it feels it as if there was a force stronger than us, pulling us and tempting us to do horrid things. Like puppets attached to strings. <laughs> I'll never understand what goes inside your head. And I'm okay with that. Because I still stand by my promise to never leave you. Together we can solve your problem. Another thought crosses my mind. Yuri, where do you get your knives? If you refer to where I used to cut, I have a knife collection. A knife collection? I've been hiding it whenever you come over, whenever you came over, because I thought you would get mad and find it unlikable. In any other case, I would think a knife collection is cool, but for Yuri's sake, it's not good to have. Yuri, I'm sorry, but you have to get rid of your knives. What? She thinks she thinks it over for a while. You're right. I know it only adds to temptation, but it's so hard. I know it is, but trust me, if you really want to get better, the best thing to do is throw away any temptation. Promise me you'll throw out your knife collection. Tears continued to pour. She cried so much, I, I've had thought her tear ducts would have been drained by now. She slams her head into my chest and continues to cry. I wrap my arms around her. It's alright, Yuri. I promise to never let anyone hurt you again. Sonyx, you heard my story. You see now that I'm just a monster. I'm weak and can't control my emotions. I take all my pent-up feelings and release them onto my own skin. How can anyone think that's okay? 
No one can. Huh? She looks up at me, with soft eyes locked onto mine. Because it's not okay. But it's also not okay for me to sit idly by and let you continue to do to hurt yourself. That's why I'm not going to stop until you're better. But why? Because, Yuri. Everything around me becomes blurry. The only thing I see is her. Because I love you. Because I love you, Yuri. I said it. I said the word I never believed would leave my mouth. Love. What an alien would to be. But it's the only word I could think of in this moment. I feel as if everything that happened has, this past month has been let out. I love you more than anything else in the world. And what you love some and when you love someone, you don't give up. Son, yes. I I love you too. Yuri wraps her arms around me and leans closer. Thank you. You can thank me once that collection is thrown away. I give her a quick smile. But she closes her eyes and continues to lean in. Whoa! Hello! That's an interesting shot. I feel her lips press against mine. All my senses are immediately overwhelmed. The taste of vanilla on her lips. The faint scent of lavender in her hair. The sound of true... S... The X taste C. Sorry, Stacy. Sorry if I can't say that word right. As my heart beats out of my chest, her arms around me and mine around her. Everything else in the world has been drowned, drowned out. Every single thought that has stored my mind has been calm. It's just Yuri and me in this single moment in time. There's an odd feeling in my stomach. Perhaps it's butterflies. I can't describe it other than that it's somewhat comforting. Like all my worries have been washed away. Yuri pulls away. What felt like eternity was only a few seconds. But the feeling continues to stay. <laughs> we sit in silence for a moment. I, uh, I guess it's my turn to thank you. Thank me after you, you schedule my next appointment with Dr. Langton. She throws me a soft smile, and for a moment, I feel like everything will be alright. A few days later. I'm stopping here, Hedgehog Maniacs. That was something to say the least. <laughs> That tense moment with Yuri. In that situation with Monica. In that mysterious text. What could they all mean? I'd still like to know what happened to Natsuki. I just hope I can find answers on that soon. Well, I'm gonna have to end it here, like I said. Sonic X17 is signing out. Catch you guys next time.